tell me if my presentation is showing and then I'll be able to proceed. Oh yes, it's showing, thank you. Great. So as uh, Dr. Mahmoud has indicated, the purpose of the presentation is about access to finance. So after this discussion, uh, colleagues, entrepreneurs, you should be able to say what is it that is needed uh, from a CIFA point of view, if you want to, to access our funding. But remember now that CIFA is one of the development funding institutions. So it's not necessarily limited to CIFA. Some of the things that we'll talk about, you know, they cut across other uh, lending institutions. Though the bias will be on CIFA. As, as, as the Mabud, Mabud have indicated, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a CIFA official. The, just to explain the, the position of CIFA, CIFA we are an implementing agency of the Department of Small Business Development. So if you check under the department, the department has got two implementing agencies, ourselves, CIFA, and our mandate is to provide development finance we have our sister agency being CEDA, Small Enterprise Development Agency. What they do at CEDA is provide business development support services. So in other words, we provide funding and our sister agency CEDA provides non-financial support. So that is, that is important to, to outline so that when you want to access our offering, you will know exactly what is it that, that we do. Let me start with this. Uh, to say, uh, I'm sure you might have seen some uh, this this uh, this caption before that says, "If you're in business, don't sell the product. Sell the problem you solve, not the product." And and and, and the reason for that is, if you identify a problem in a community, in a society, and you develop a solution for that particular problem, and you can commercialize the solution, then you have a business. So in other words, what we're saying here is, it's difficult if you have a product or a service that you want to push into your target market. You know, you will be forever spending money advertising, trying to, 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 to coerce people to buy things that you, you think they need. However, if you have identified a problem for your target market, and you know that you've got a solution for that, like I said before, you can commercialize that and then you have a sustainable business. So I think then it, it's important to just think through this to say in the business that I'm, I'm involved in, what problem am I solving? The, the other thing that I would like to, to, to begin with, is it's also important to, 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 to get a sweet spot. If you're an entrepreneur, one thing is that you, you must be passionate about the things that you do. So let's, let's, let's for a second focus on that to say, passion, what does it really mean? It's you do what you love. So you're passionate about this, whatever thing that you do, you know, you have to, 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 to ask yourself, is this my, my, my passion? Is this what I, uh, I came into this world to, 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 to achieve? The, the other thing then is the talent. You know, gauge your passion against your God-given talent. So it is what you love, uh, but are you good at it? You know, then, then you look at passion and talent. If you can then answer those two questions, to say, I'm passionate about X and I'm talented to do that. The last but not least, it's a, it's a business model. Then you then say, uh, does it pay well? Have you developed a business model about your passion and talent? In other words, uh, you, are people willing to pay you for the value that you provide to them? So where those three sectors meet, passion, talent, and the business model, that is your, your sweet spot. So when you develop a funding proposal, when you develop your business plan, as it were, it's, it's, it's crucial to, to, to ask yourself those three, three uh, uh, questions. As a CIFA, uh, our, our operating model is that we, uh, have channels, what we call, we've got two distribution channels. That is how our money or the funding or the offering that we have gets to the market. We have got what we call direct lending channel 
And through direct lending, that is where small SMEs and cooperatives can directly uh, apply for funding through a suite of our regional offices. And we've got what we call a wholesale model. A wholesale model is where we work with intermediaries that provide funding support to, to, to SMEs and, and cooperatives. So if for a second we focus on direct lending, through direct lending, you can approach any of our regional offices, like I said, or approach any of the CFAR co-locations. We've got co-locations where we collocate with other institutions like CEDA, for instance. Uh, through that, you're able to go to those offices, apply for funding from a minimum of 50,000 to a maximum of 15 million. Rand. So our maximum is 15 million. We don't exceed that. And through direct lending, we don't go below uh, 50,000. We provide a suite of debt instruments where we can provide funding for you to purchase an asset, what we call asset finance. We also provide funding to some of our clients who will have secured contracts. So some of our clients will have secured contracts where we then provide funding for, the, for our clients to be able to fulfill those contracts. We also have revolving credit loans. This we normally use or provide to our existing clients. So some of our clients, you find that you've got a contract within that particular contract. You've got a, a, a number of purchase orders. So rather than you applying for funding as and when you get a purchase order, we can provide a revolving credit finance and then you can close down on uh, as and when you get a purchase order. We also have our term loans. Uh, and we also have what we call township and rural entrepreneurship programs, TREP. I'll explain uh, the, that later. Uh, so that is, those are the instruments, that funding instruments are the direct lending. Under wholesale, we work, like I said, with a number of intermediaries. So these are institutions uh, that are out there that are providing some form of funding support to SMFP. So we can partner with them and we can solution or provide in uh, tailored support or tailored funding instruments for those institutions to be able to, to service their particular market. We, uh, for instance, can provide credit guarantees. So this is where we share the risk with, with vendors. A uh, typical example would be a commercial bank. Commercial banks can come to CIFA and say, we do have a balance sheet, we do have money to lend to small businesses. However, we need to share the risk with you guys at CIFA. So, for that, we are able to provide them with uh, credit guarantees. We also have equity funds where we can invest with uh, other uh, investors in the fund. We get an independent fund manager to manage those funds. And we can also provide what we call structured finance solutions. So here we can structure anything. As long as you come and say you are in the business of, of lending to small businesses and then you put your proposal or your, your, your business case and we can provide a solution for that. And we also have what we call other support services where we provide post-investment support. Post-investment support is to our existing clients where we can provide mentorship. Uh, we also do provide what we call workouts and restructuring. In other words, when we find businesses, uh, we can provide mentorship, that is one. But if businesses are struggling, we don't just call our debt and close businesses. We try as much as we can to, uh, to, to relieve or to support those businesses through our workout and restructuring uh, uh, interventions. And we do have properties, uh, not a big portfolio, but we do have properties where we provide retail space or industrial space in, in the various provinces. Now, the, the discussion today will center around direct lending because yeah, uh, you guys, the entrepreneurs, will be interested to say, how do I access CIFA direct lending instruments? Like I said, if I go back under direct lending, we provide funding 50,000 minimum and 15 million being the maximum. So if you look in terms of direct lending instrument, I did cover this before where I said, you want to purchase an asset, uh, it can be machinery, it can be equipment, it can be any asset that can be identified by way of a serial number. Then we're able to say, come to CIFA, we're able to, to, to help you with that. What is crucial and what is good about this is that we take that particular asset as our first form of security. 
So if you say you want to purchase a machinery or a vehicle or a truck, whatever the case is, we'll be able to assist and then take that as our first uh, sensitivity. The, the repayment period, normally it will be 60 months uh, for asset finance to, we can also stretch it to about 72 months depending on your cash flows and depending on how you, 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 you affordability of the loan. But normally we, we're looking at 60 months. So that's asset finance. We've got term loans, term loans very similar to asset finance in a way, but here we talk about other movable assets, you know, which may not be assets where you can identify them by way of serial numbers, like I said before. For instance, you're talking about office furniture, features and fittings, uh, or some of the working capital. Yeah, we're talking a repayment period of between 12 months to, to 60 months. Uh, you can do that through a term loan and funding instrument. Bridging loan, this instrument we use for clients that have secured contracts. So you have secured a contract, you have secured a market, but you need capital to be able to uh, service that particular contract. And then here we can provide bridging loan facilities. It's an easier thing to do in a sense because here you already have a market. You know, we just have to make sure that uh, you've got a cap capacity to deliver on that particular contract. And then we're able to, to finance uh, you through this instrument. Revolving credit, uh, like I indicated, this we normally use to support our existing clients. You've got clients that have got contracts with multiple purchase orders. So rather than apply each and every time when you want to uh, uh, service a particular uh, purchase order, then we can provide a revolving credit facility. So those are the instruments that we do have under, under direct lending. Um, now, this looks like a business line, but as we said that the, the title of the talk this morning is about what is it that you need to do when you want to apply for funding. So these are the documents you can see now. It's a, it's a grocery list type of documents. Uh, I won't go through each and every one of those uh, of these documents because the presentation will be shared. But the reason for showing this is uh, it, it is very crucial when you apply to make sure that you submit each and every document if it's applicable to your particular business or application. Uh, because some of our clients or applicants, you find that you look at a list like this and then you submit probably half of this and not submit the other, that will affect the, the progress and the turnaround time in your application. So it's very much important to, for instance, when you look at the application form, complete each and every section that is there uh, because it gives our, our deal makers, our investment officers, enough information to do what you call due diligence on your application. Remember CIFA as a development funding institution, you are under a commercial bank where we will have your, 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 your history in terms of how you transact. You know, if you bank with a particular bank, you probably have a savings account or a check account with that particular bank. So as and when you transact on a, on a regular, on a daily basis, whatever the frequency, a particular bank can be able to, 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 to track how you, 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 you conduct your account. So we don't have that as a safer bank. When you apply, it will be for the first time that we get to know about you and your business. So it's very much important to give us as much information as possible such so that we're able to take responsible lending decisions. So like I said before, I won't go through each and every one of these. But as you can see, so all of them are very, very important for us to take a decision when you approach us in a bank of funding. Where, what is crucial again is where things are not applicable in your case, you, know, you don't have to worry about it. For example, if you are starting a new business, it's a startup business, we won't ask for financial statements because it is a startup business. So you have to apply your mind to say, is this particular requirement applicable to my business? If yes, then give us the information. If no, then you don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is the continuation in terms of the documents that we require, but this one talks to the different funding instruments that I, I, I spoke about earlier on. So for term loan and asset finance, you need to give us a business plan, cash flow projections, lease agreement if uh, you are a tenant in, 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 the, in 
in a particular building on property. Franchise agreement, if applicable. The bridging roads where we did indicate that these are for clients that have secured contracts, you need to give us a project plan and projections. How are you intending to execute on that particular contract? The copy of the contract, uh, in terms of construction in, uh, or any project that you have done, you need to give us completion certificates. Uh, like you, you see the last three bullets under bridging loan applications, talks about the NHBRC and CIDB. This is for construction, bill of quantities for construction. So if you are in a construction business, uh, you have secured a contract. These are some of the things that you need, you need to, to, to submit. Eligibility criteria, who's eligible to apply for CIFA funding? Uh, that is the list. So what it really means is you have to go through that and be able to, to assess yourself to say, am I eligible to apply for CIFA funding? If yes, then you go ahead and apply. Remember, CIFA as a DFI has been, has been given a mandate and we've been given a particular uh, a problem to solve, as it were, to say that CIFA is here to address issues around market failure. CIFA is a development funding institution. We actually play in a space where other private conventional lenders uh, cannot and should not be paying. So we have carved our criteria to make sure that we support a particular uh, uh, target market, so to speak. For instance, if you look at that in terms of eligibility, we say that you, for you to apply, you must be a South African citizen or have a permanent residence. And the business must be registered. You must legally be within the contractual, contractual capacity to enter into a loan agreement. The business that you want us to support or fund must, have, must be registered in South Africa. Uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot export. Remember, exporting is the market that happens to be sitting outside the Republic, but your, your business must be within, within uh, South Africa. In terms of compliance, you must make sure that you comply with whatever regulatory or industry uh, compliance that is, important, that is uh, applicable to, to your particular business. Uh, so the list goes on like that. So it's important, again, like I said, check yourself in terms of eligibility before you, you could apply. Exclusions. We do have certain things that we do not find. So that is the list that you can see in front of you there. Uh, now, if you are in this type of businesses, you're manufacturing and selling ammunition, you are in what is called the sin industries, tobacco, alcohol, beverages, etc. You're a non-profit organization and NPO, obviously political organizations we can't find. You are under debt review, you also cannot be able to assist. You uh, have been uh, declared insolvent and you are not rehabilitated. We also cannot be able to assist. We also don't fund what we call primary agriculture. Primary agriculture, we only get involved when it's cash crop and you got an offtake agreement. Cash crops here, we're talking about crops that you know you have you, you plant and harvest in the shops one season and you've got a market where you are taking your produce to. In that case, we can finance you. However, if it's the primary agriculture where you are maybe in a timber business or you're buying vines through direct lending, we are not able to do that. Uh, when it comes to uh, property development, speculative property development, I beg your pardon, that word speculative and property is supposed to be separated, but it, we should read speculative property development. We don't do that. We don't do property development. If you say it's a real estate type of development, you know, you want to uh, develop a, a set of, of, of townhouses and then you want people to, to, to buy those, you want to rent them out. We don't do that. We can only do if you put a defined sector market, like for instance, student accommodation. In that case, we're able to, to, to assist. Now, before I move from eligibility and, and, and exclusion, what, what we have also done because it might be difficult to you know, ask and answer all those things in terms of eligibility and exclusions. On our website, you are able to apply online. So we've got an online application portal. What that portal will do is a pre-screening portal. You click into our website, go and apply for finance, and then it will ask you very, very basic questions about your business. 
if you are eligible to apply for safer funding. In other words, you are ticking boxes in terms of this slide, and also you are not in these exclusions and amongst other things. Uh, the portal will uh, proceed. You proceed where you can download our application form, complete, and then and then submit to the nearest uh, regional offices, an regional office, or a co-location super center. If you are not eligible to apply or, or to, to, to be assisted by CIFO, the portal is developed in such a way that it's got other lenders in the country that can assist. So it will give you a list of other potential lenders that can assist you. So it is, it's helpful to use that platform or that portal because it will never leave you frustrated. It's not a question of saying that we will say we, we cannot assist you and then we leave you in a ledge we will be able to direct your proposal in terms of options, where else can, can you go and apply for. So yeah, that, that's that in terms of exclusion and, and, and eligibility criteria. The, the next part is around the pricing structure. Like I said before, we provide loans, uh, debt funding where we do charge interest. So interest is linked on prime rate, we'll check what the prime rate is, and then we will to uh, put a margin for risk. In other words, no two businesses will face the same amount of interest. It depends what we will find when we take your application through our pricing structure. So we take it through our pricing model to then say for this business, you'll be able to charge prime plus one as an example. So, but prime is our base rate that we use. What we also do is as a development funding institution, we give very, very marginal a discount on our interest rate. If, for instance, you're producing, I mean, you're creating jobs, you are a young person, you are female, you're in a rural area. Uh, for entrepreneurs with disabilities, we've got a scheme where we charge 7% fixed interest rate. For military veterans, we've got another similar scheme, but the main difference here is that our interest rate is 9%. We charge an initiation fee based on the capital or on the loan amount that you're applying for. And the initiation fee will range from 1% to 5%, again, depending on the duration of, of, of the business. The longer the duration, the lower the, the, the initiation fee because you will be paying more interest to CIFA. The shorter the duration, maybe it's just a three months contract. You're not paying a lot of interest. And then in that case, your initiation fee will be a little bit higher because as an institution, we, uh, we we need to charge interest to sustain the work that we do and be able to help other other entrepreneurs. So that is the pricing structure. And before I move to the next one, because if you can see there, you've got two. I don't want to say gentlemen, or but you've got two people sitting, uh, standing on the opposite end of of, of what seemed to be, a, you know, like maybe. A, 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 uh, Pose, whatever the case is. The other guy, when you look at that, you can see four. The guy on the left, on my left, the other guy on the right can see three. And when you look at that, the question then is who's right? And they're both right because it depends from at what angle are they looking at this thing. Why am I saying this? We get uh, entrepreneurs who submit business plans to, uh, to, to us. And we look at a business plan. Remember, when we're looking at a business plan, we are not necessarily looking at it from a same point of view. As an entrepreneur, you are looking at that because you're passionate. You've got, you know, you are looking at the business plan to say nothing will go wrong. You know, that's 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 how entrepreneurs operate. You know, everything will go wrong. But from a lender investor point of view, we are looking at the business plan from a risk point of view to say if we invest in this business. Will the business be able to survive? You know, we ask questions that might we play some devil's advocate, if I may put it that way, where we ask a bit of tough questions, uh, but because we are looking at each and every element from a risk point of view to say, what if things don't happen? Don't happen this way. Now, if you respond to those things and we all see the same thing, then we're able to to to, to work together. So what we have done because here yeah, we're talking about the issue of business plans. We have developed what we call a fund, a common funding template. And a common funding template says, if you want to apply for funding at CIFA, this is the template of a, 
uh, of a business plan. Let's call it a business plan that you need to submit. You know, there are so many templates of business plans or funding proposals out there, but we have developed what we call it's a common funding template because the questions that we ask in that template, as and when we respond to those questions, is giving us the information that we can use. The beauty about the template is it's not, it was not only developed by CIFA. We did consult with the IDC, Industrial Development Corporation. We did consult with the National Empowerment Fund, the NEF, the National Youth Development Agency, NYDA, as well as our sister organization, CDAP, Small Enterprise Development Agency. So we came with what we call a common funding template, because remember now, as lenders, the information that we require is more or less the same. It's very, very generic. There will be differences here and there, but broadly speaking, the things that we are looking for are more or less the same. So we have developed and came with this type of a template. But here I'm just going through the headings or the categories that we would want to know when you approach CIFA for, for funding. The first thing that we will need is company information. So you need to tell us about your company, you know, because obviously we don't know the company, but then you need to tell us uh, uh, what is it that you do. Uh, the next part is the shareholder information or director's information. So we need to know who are the people behind the company. Um, the third element will be the company structure. You know, you need to show us the organogram. Why is that important? We just have to get an understanding. How are you, are you managing this company? The business operations, uh, tell us exactly the operations. If it's a manufacturing company, we have to go deep in terms of the manufacturer and uh, the operations. It's a retail company, you need to tell us about that. Products and services, what is it that you are offering to the market? Solving the problem uh, that we spoke about earlier on. Now, number six, we talk about the market or industry analysis. So you need to understand the broader market that you operate in. So if you're in a business, you're targeting a particular market, uh, target market, you need to understand your, 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 your industry. If you're in a food business, you need to understand that space. If you're in the logistics business, you need to understand that space. If you're in manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera. So give us a market, macro, global uh, market analysis. Now we talk about the target market. So we, who is your target market? Who are you targeting? You know, you need to pin it down. If you're targeting individuals, also pin it down to the level of what you call the living standard measures. You know that I'm targeting lower LSMs, I'm targeting higher LSM, but you know, unpack who your real target market is. Remember in the previous slide, I was talking about solving a problem. So you need to tell us here, you're solving a problem for which particular market. Now, number eight, to talk about the marketing strategy because you do have a target market, but you need to find ways to penetrate that market. So what is your strategy? How are you going to penetrate that market? And remember the target market is not only looking at you as a business to, to, start to, to, to buy from or to support, how are you going to penetrate that particular market? So your marketing strategy is very, very key. Number nine, you have penetrated the market. Now the sales strategy, so how are you going to generate your turnover? Because you may be in the market, be in the space, maybe you penetrate that through advertising, whatever the case is. Uh, but what is your sales strategy? You know, to convert uh, the support into turnover. Your, your competitive environment, no business is a monopoly. So once you're out there, you've got competition, you know, and, and, and people don't necessarily buy out of pity. They buy because you are solving a particular problem for them. So talk to us about your competitive environment. You, you should be able to tell us that you understand your competitive environment and what is your competitive edge? What makes you different from your competition? And then you need to tell us that. And whatever makes you different from your competition, it must be something that is sustainable. You know, if you are saying that I'm going to be cheap, price is not always sustainable because people can always undercut you. You know, so just tell us exactly what is it that makes you different from your competition. The location for certain businesses, location is very, very key. That is why they're saying, you know, in some, in some, in some instances, 
the most important thing in business is location, location, and location. So uh, if location is key to you, you have to tell us that, and then we will analyze that. Does it help you in terms of your proximity to your clients, proximity to your suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. Your external environment, that's your political, economic, social, and technology. Uh, actually, that's supposed to be personal, including the, uh, your, your, your environmental and the legal environment. So understand the whole personal environment to say how does it impact your business. Some of the businesses are not necessarily impacted or some areas will impact you more than others. You know, so just uh, uh, look, understand your, your personal environment and then tell us exactly how, does it, how does it affect you. If I take an example of technology, I mean, we're living in a new normal type of an environment where most of the things are driven through technology. So if your business uh, is affected by that technology, you know, people, if you're in a food business, people now, they prefer deliveries that go to sit in a restaurant, as an example. You know, so those are some of the things to then say, understand your political, economic environment, social environment, technology, uh, the environment, uh, as well as your, your, your legal environment. Number 13, the funding requirements. Uh, you need to tell us exactly what is it that you're looking for from C because it has to be a well research request. If you come to us and say, I'm looking for funding, I'm looking for this amount, uh, and then you have to break it down for us, you're looking for 10 million, how are you going to use the funding uh, that you request? The financial modeling here, we're talking about issues around the cash flow projections, your income statement, and your balance sheet. If it's an existing business, obviously, you have a bookkeeper who will assist you to develop those kind of instruments, I mean, of those kind of, of statements. Uh, and also do the projections. The most important thing when you apply for CIF, uh, to, to, to CIF for funding, if it's an existing business, yes, we look at the historical performance, but the key is to look into, into the projections going forward. So we're able to then say, uh, if you then are saying to us, we'll be repaying your loan in five years, you need to give us five year cash flow projections. And the projections have to be motivated, well motivated. If you're saying you're going to be generating 10 over X amount of, of, of 10 over, it cannot be a thumb suck. It must be informed by things that you have spoken about the target market, the marketing strategy, and in sense that should actually inform how you, you, you project your 10 over. So, and then the banking information, if you've got banking facilities with a particular bank, we need to know about that. Uh, supply information, you've got suppliers, you need to tell us about your suppliers. Your staffing people that are working for you, compliance, compliance environment, but last but not least, it is a SWOT analysis. So this is the funding template that says if you complete this comprehensively, we'll all be able to see things uh, the same way. You know, someone will be seeing a four or a three, but won't be able to see things in the same way. What we have also done to simplify this funding template, it also has been digitized. So you can visit our website. Uh, under a common funding template, where it says apply for funding, under common funding template, you can complete this online. What it will do, it, the portal asks very, very basic, simple questions about your business. So as and when you respond to, to such questions, it will build a web document, which is a funding template. You can download that, edit it, the manner in which you like. If you feel you still need help in certain sections, then you can approach CEDA. Like I said, CEDA deals with non-financial support. You can approach CEDA, and CEDA will be able to assist you to make this to be a bankable funding proposal. So this is a very, very uh, important document for us. Um, the, okay, this just the, for, for information purposes too. Remember as a CIFA, we only under direct lending provide debt funding. We don't provide equity. So as an entrepreneur, if you're looking for funding, whether to start or expand your business, depending on the phase, it's important to understand the difference between debt and equity. Now, debt, obviously, you're talking about institutions that provide debt without taking any shareholding in your business. And then when you're talking about equity, we're talking about those institutions. They don't necessarily, uh, they, they will take a, what you call shareholding in your business. So there are pros and cons for each. 
So in terms of equity uh, uh, funding, there are no monetary payments that will be expected. Remember I spoke about cash flow projections. So if you, you, you are in a business where you're not so sure about your projections, maybe it's a startup business in a tech, the tech industry, you cannot comprehensively or convincingly uh, project to turn over. So in that case, you might be looking for an equity investor. So that 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 funding, um, we don't take equity. You remain with you. The shareholders remain as it is. But for equity investors, because they are not looking for predictable cash flows, they will then say for the risk that we take, we'll have to take some control in, in, in the business. So it's important to understand that, so that when you approach any DFI or any lender, you need to know exactly what kind of intervention you're looking for. And you must make sure that whatever you're looking for, they've got such uh, instrument to, to assist. Uh, we've got programs that we call township and rural entrepreneurship programs. And these are programs that we have developed. You know, when COVID hit, we realized that, uh, remember when COVID uh, hit then, uh, most businesses were under lockdown. And at that point, CIFA, together with CIFA and the department, we were assisting business in terms of the debt relief, you know, more relief schemes to make businesses to survive that, that period of hard lockdown. But now, as the economy opens up, the economy is beginning to recover. We have developed programs that we are saying are supporting businesses in townships and rural areas. Because we cannot assume that because of COVID, it was hard lockdown, now the economy is recovering. We cannot assume that businesses that are in, in those spaces, your rural and, 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 and the township, will be able to you know, come back and be in the mainstream. We need to intentionally support those, those, those businesses. So we have developed what we call uh, the TREP programs, township and rural entrepreneurship programs. I won't go through uh, each one of them in detail, but the principle behind that is what we, we provide here a combination of debt and grants. So we provide what we call blended finance. Uh, some programs, the maximum can be 350,000, where your grant can be a maximum of 50,000. So we've got a program, for instance, for spaza shop support program, where we support spaza shops in township and rural areas. This one here, we provide a maximum of 7,000, uh, 3,500 being a grant, and 3,500 being, 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 being a, a loan facility. Uh, this is for stock. You might think 7,000 is not, in, it's not a lot of money, but it is if you think in terms of a stock, of a spaza shop, that wants to roll out the stock on, on, a, on, on, a, on a quicker basis. So if your stock rolls out quickly, you buy something today being a Thursday, you know over a weekend you've sold that, you can go and stock again, buy it again on, on, on Monday as it were. So 7,000 can, can roll and then you invest it back into your business. You can have a, you can build the stock level quickly with 7,000 rand. So we've got that kind of facility. We've got another one called the Small Scale Manufacturing Program where we support uh, um, businesses that are in the manufacturing space. Here we provide a maximum of 15 million and a grant to a maximum of about 2 million. Uh, the others, your informal clothing and textile. Uh, we've got bakeries and confectionaries, the other one, the auto body repairs. Fruit and veg, the fruit and veg one, yeah, we just provide a grant to a maximum of 2,000 grand to uh, entrepreneurs that are selling, you know, our, 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 our food vendors, their fruit and vegetable vendors. The hairdressers and personal care scheme, the, the, the last but not least is Chisanyama and cook food vendors. So I'm rushing through these programs in the interest of time, but if you visit our website, you'll be able to get the details in terms of how those programs uh, work. The target, like I said, is township businesses and businesses in, 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 in rural areas. That's, that's our footprint. Uh, we have got our, have our head office in, in, in Centurion. We've got offices in, in each province. We've got an office, uh, one office per province in the main, except in Gauteng, where we've got two regional offices. But again, if you visit our website, you'll be able to see where those, where those offices are located in terms of the main office 
as well as the core location centers. Our contact details, our website, that is the one there. Uh, you can also visit, uh, dial our call center 0127489600, or you can drop us an email at helplinecipher.org.za. Or like I said before, you can apply online. We've got uh, two portals that I've spoken about here. The one is where you can apply uh, online to pre-screen your business. The other one is where you can, if you want to develop a funding template, you can go online and be able to, to develop that funding template. So in closing, I think that is life, you know, as a business person or any other person for that matter, you know, when you're bored, you think life will be smooth, like the top guy there riding a bicycle. But now the reality is the, is, is the bottom part. Uh, you know, life is not as smooth as we think it will be. Uh, so by this, I think let's be encouraged to, without losing focus where the destiny is going to be. I think COVID has also shown us to say life is not as smooth as, as, as it should be, but we need to navigate and be able to achieve what we were meant to achieve. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Mr. Don Marchelli. Indeed, uh, life is not smooth, but your presentation was smooth. We thank you very much for the effort that you put in. It was quite comprehensive um, and uh, quite extensive, and you covered most of the questions that uh, some of us have. We do have a um, we do have some time to take some questions. So if you have a question. You can simply raise your hand, we'll unmute you, and you'll be able to ask Mr. Don directly. Uh, but I have I have a question first that um, I'd like to ask. Um, so, so far, uh, Mr. Don, uh, what was uh, the response in terms of the entrepreneurship and they are uh, applying for funding um, uh, uh, during or post COVID? What, were the numbers high? or the entrepreneurs were sort of discouraged by the circumstances? Yeah, I, I think it was a bit of both. Uh, the, the numbers were high. Okay, when COVID hit, we had two schemes. We had what we call the debt relief uh, scheme. Because remember when we had a hard lockdown, was the play at five at that time. You know, the economy was almost in a, on, on a standstill. So we had a fund called the Debt Relief Scheme. That fund we're providing funding to businesses to, to, to pay their utilities because not all businesses were trading at that time. So we're paying utilities by, uh, by way of like your, 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 your renter, we'll be paying you the municipal accounts, we'll pay your workers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that fund was not a big fund, it was about 500 million. The, the demand at that time was huge. You know, we were oversubscribed on that front because a lot of businesses, you know, were, were struggling. So, but now when the economy opened up, the, the numbers were still looking for the debt relief because we can argue that the economy has opened up, but things are not as yet, yet as normal. So the, on, on the, should I call it the, the environment where we are saying now we are almost things are beginning to normalize in a way we are getting applications but the applications are not that many because again not everybody now wants to go into debt you know if you are running a given example of you're running a restaurant you might say you have survived from hard level I and mean, lockdown hard level I and mean, lockdown five to now but you are still not sure to say, should I go in, 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 in debt myself into federal liability? Because you know, the, the, the world as we speak, or the economy as we speak, you know, there's still some question marks in terms of a number of things. So what I'm saying that the, the applications are coming, but they're not coming in the manner in which they will be coming if things were normal. Absolutely, makes total sense. We have a question from Gatle Hosomo. We are going to unmute you. Please go ahead, uh, Gatle. Hi, Don, how are you? Well, I thank you. 
I'm all right. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. My question is regarding to uh, sourcing documentation, because uh, in particular for um, the rural and township businesses. So sometimes uh, when you when you spoke about uh, financial statements and all those, so it's it's not easy to source them because uh, you have to pay a bookkeeper to do that for you. And as a rural or township business, you don't always have the funds for that. So how do you help businesses if they are interested in funding, but cannot meet that requirement in terms of, uh, you, you do find that there are business accounts, so they have finance records, but they are not uh, well, uh, well, presenta well presented as they would if, they were presented by a, a finance person, if you know what I mean. Thank you. Yes, yes, Mr. Uh, Tom, you're right. And that, 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 that's one of the challenges. In, in that case, we involve CEDA. Remember I said CEDA, Small Enterprise Development Agency, deals with uh, non-financial support. So if we assess a business and we come to a point where we realize that one of the things that needs to be sorted out, for instance, is uh, one business plan that's an easy part, but if it's financials, you know, financials linked with projections, we involve CEDA. So CEDA services are not paid by an entrepreneur. You know, an entrepreneur would have to, I think, pay 10% of the cost of that. But in that particular instance, to answer your question directly, is that we then link those entrepreneurs with our sister organization, CEDA, and then CEDA will do what they have to do. And then if it's, the problem is solved, and then the businesses will refer back to us. Thanks. No, fantastic. We see the thumbs up from uh, Mr. Somo. Thank you for the question that you raised. Um, we, we have about two minutes to go uh, before our next speaker comes on. There's, there's another question that I'd like to ask you, uh, Mr. Don. This relates to uh, CEDA and, and CIFA. Um, what, what, what is the relation between the two departments? Because they all set up to help entrepreneurs. If you can just clarify um, uh, that for us uh, uh, briefly, I know the, the answer can potentially be extensive, but if you can just uh, 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 shorten it for us, uh, no, no, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And the moment, you're right. Uh, CEDA, I think it was my second or third slide. CEDA, Small Enterprise Development Agency, they deal with non financial support. So any intervention that is non financial, you are not looking for a loan. You know, you're looking for assistance, maybe to help with marketing, uh, to develop a website for you, or to anything non-financial, CEDA will be able to assist you. You know, issues around quality and standards. You know, maybe you're in manufacturing, you're saying, I've got this uh, product, but I don't have a barcode. You know, I, I need to get quality assurance, et cetera, et cetera. So CEDA will help with anything that is non-financial. CIFA, we only provide funding. You know, when you come to CIFA, you must be applying for a loan to say that I need financial assistance. I need to enter into a loan agreement with you guys and I'll repay you back. So I think to get it simpler, non-financial CEDA, anything that has got to do with loans, that funding, you want to start a business, you need money. You want to expand a business, you need money. You want to buy a business, you need money. Then you come to see. But if you say that I'm not looking for funding, you know, in my business, I need something to be done internally. Like I said, it's costing, it's marketing, whatever the case, that becomes uh, CEDA. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Don. Uh, once again, your, your presentation was excellent. Um, your answer just that you provided now was clear and concise and to the point, and you broke down the difference between the two entities and how um, entrepreneurs can really use the resources at their disposal in order to give themselves a competitive edge in a very competitive field uh, that is entrepreneurship. Uh, we are going to make this uh, presentation available uh, online for you to be able to view it offline. Um, we know that many are having uh, difficulties and challenges we're getting from our back end uh, uh, people asking us uh, questions as to how to log into Zoom. We are using a Zoom platform, uh, but no worries. Um, the, the, the presentation was extensive. There's quite a lot to, to review. We will provide uh, those links later to the video and you'll be able to view the video in your own time at your own, um, at your own comfort. 
and you'll be able to uh, then um, grasp the keys that were mentioned by Mr. Don. Thank you once again for your presentation.